Hello, everyone. Thank you for being here with me tonight. Today is the second module of Unbox the Real You with Sahar. And today's subject is how to design the web of your life. Um, before we begin, this is a really important subject for me because I went through a very difficult time, a life-changing um, event, if you will, and I found myself not only lost, but I couldn't find the right help, the right answers from any one single person. And usually, even friends and family would try and reflect what's going on in their life or project it on you. So that didn't give me any satisfaction. So I worked hard and um, experientially, I learned quite a lot of things. And in this program, after 25 years experience, I'm trying to share all my knowledge and the tools that I have developed, which have really worked for me. I followed a lot of disciplines, and if you like, what I um, put together is what I found that has really worked for me. So there are tools that you could use on your own, and my objective is to support you in your life um, to develop the best version that you can be, to be the best version that you can be of yourself, and to understand why you sometimes um, suffer disorientation, apathy, confusion, or even just tension and struggle. Uh, basically, as I refer to it, we are out of alignment. So I'm going to talk briefly about what this webinar is about. And um, I also would like to share with you why did I call it Unbox? Two reasons. One is, currently, there's this phenomena of unboxing, which I find really intriguing, that a lot of people spend a lot of time um, watching other people unbox other things. <laughs> and it just kind of struck me, what a waste of time. What also struck me is how we box ourselves in certain identities, and then we begin to gather elements and um, you know, stuff that we think defines who we are. So if you notice my thing motto on, on my website is find yourself, live your life. Because how can you get what you want in life if you don't know who you are. And you might think you know who you are. I mean, God knows I've had so many clients come in and say, label themselves, you know, I've got this and that, I've got this condition. I said, how do you know? I've been told, I've been told. So I would like to unbox that and really um, unravel it, kind of like onion skin, one layer at a time. The other reason that unbox came up is long time ago, I think when TEDx um, started the lectures, I watched this video by this woman that I can't remember who, but the video was really important and it was something about identity and how every time we identify ourselves, either with our nationality or background or religion or what we do or where we live, we literally put ourselves in a box until there are so many boxes that really separate us uh, from the others because in the end, there are no other ingredients. We are all made of the same stuff. It's one planet, one people, one universe. And it's very um, important that if you get the wrong identity, because it's the building blocks of everything in life, you know, what you accumulate, who you marry, who you hang out with, the friends that you have, the job that you do, the things that you buy. So when you uncover all of that and get down to your essence, who you truly are, and you know who you truly are, if you are living in alignment, and we'll talk about what alignment is, so this is the second webinar, and I'm going to share with you tonight's um, topic, which is where do you start from? So last webinar, it was about finding balance. I've asked you if you had a lot of questions, and you sent them over. And it seemed to me that they were generally about how do I balance my life. So there is a tool on the, on the webinar one, on module one. I hope you've downloaded it and done it. There is also the tool for tonight for this webinar. I hope you have downloaded it, printed, and have it ready in front of you. If you don't, have a pen and paper ready because we're gonna go through that exercise. So this is, let me move this window so you can see, I think maybe here is okay. So this is module two, and it's called Design the Web of Your Life. Let me first start by asking you, why are you here? Well, you're in the right place if you're not aware whether you are in alignment or not, whether you're not aware of what guides us to life, if you're not sure whether you're on the right track, because very often I get a lot of clients asking, am I doing the right thing? What is it that I'm supposed to do? 
if you are not aware what your life purpose is at the moment, you know, what should you be doing with your life, with your time? If you are experiencing tension and struggle, then something is out of alignment. And if you're not aware of who the real you is. Finally, if you're confused and you can't make a clear decision, you know, whether to go left or right, be it in your personal life or in your a business life, you can use tonight's tool and apply it to any area in life. And we'll talk a little bit about that later on. You can apply it to your personal life. You can apply it to your business life. You can apply it to a project. You can apply it to um, something that you're doing, um, to your community, to your um, anything really, a project, a book. You know, it's, it's all about bringing all the aspects of whatever it is that you're going to look at and seeing it, it's, it's almost the purpose is to turn um, the intangible, to make, it, to make the intangible tangible. And I, I'm a visual person as well, and I feel that sometimes when you can't explain something, but you see it in front of you, which is what tool one does, finding your balance. So I really hope you use that. And by the way, leave a comment, let me know how you feel, whether you've used it, what you think of it. And the same thing, when tonight, when you see what is the shape of the web of your life, it kind of hits you. I had a client come in only last week and when I started asking her about her life and she said, no, 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 everything is fine. So we did this exercise together and she got a striking shape to her life, which I'll show you later on. And then suddenly it became very clear to her and she understood what was we're talking about. And she said, yes, I need to do this. I need to do that. And I'm hoping that this simple tool, sometimes you just need a simple thing, a simple tool to start with and that gets the ball rolling. So, what will you learn tonight? What will you learn on this webinar? You will learn how to begin the process of unboxing. Where do you start from to get to know the real you? You will become clear at whatever step that you want to take. You will start identifying what is right action um, and also in measure, you know, if you're overacting, underacting, um, whether again, whether it's in your business life or in your personal life, let me move this up a little bit. You will also start to, you will start learning what tools to use and you will start practicing them because each module will have a tool for life. Um, again, these are, I've, some I've developed further, I've taken from other sources, some are absolutely mine. Um, I brought them all together to really help you so that there's no excuse for not getting on with your life. And then you really start to divine so you start to plan your divine or your sacred life. You know, life for me is sacred. It's one life. Um, it's your movie. If you don't like the script, you can change it. So it's not a rehearsal. Let's get on with it. What is this process based on? So what my unboxing process or my awareness process, but I think unboxing is a great name, don't you? Is based on the four dimensions of change. I call them BIMA because they stand one for your body. Your body is your vehicle in this lifetime. If you're unfit, if you're unhealthy, how can you complete your journey, realize your goals, and live the life that you're meant to live? So we will talk briefly about the body. The second element or dimension is emotions. And this is a good one because a lot of people are not sure, are they thinking the feeling or are they feeling the feeling? So very often we have thought and thoughts are emotive. And we think this is how we feel. So how do you distinguish? And feelings and um, thoughts are very linked together. Actually, they're interlinked, they're interchangeable because thoughts are emotive and very often we mix the two. So it's important that you kind of recognize, is this a feeling or is it a thought? Because a thought process, we can always change. A belief system that is dysfunctional, we can change. But you need to distinguish so that you know where you are. We'll talk about that in, in that module to come. And the third element is your mind. The fourth and last um, dimension of change is your actions or your accountability. And I think a lot of holistic modalities miss that one because it does really hold the participant, you, accountable for whatever they did and whatever they're going to do and whatever they chose not to do. This may sound a little bit severe, but actually I find it very empowering. Just the fact that I know I've committed a mistake, I've taken the wrong decision, does make me feel empowered. 
because I know if I didn't get it right the first time, I will get it right the second time. It makes me feel like I am in charge. I made that happen. And if I correct my process, then I will get the desired result. Next, we're going to talk about what results do you hope to get from this webinar. And I really hope that you do. And I look forward to your comments, whether you're watching this on the rebroadcast or you're watching it on my YouTube, YouTube channel, Salt of the Sahar, please leave a comment, let me know. I value your opinion and I want to direct this in a way that it's absolutely useful to you. I am hoping, I'm betting on you, that you will emerge as a resilient participant of a joyful life that you fall in love with. We want to cancel the apathy out and you can fulfill your life purpose. Resilience is a very big thing. I've wrote a lot about personal resilience. Please check my magazine, catharic.com. You'll find a lot of articles that talk, what resilience, talk about what resilience is, how do we define resilience, and basically, it is about how to operate um, at your optimum levels when you're really under a crisis. You kind of ride the wave, you surf the wave, and you arrive safely at the shore. I'm doing this webinar and I'm kind of undergoing a personal crisis, but I'm having the beamers in check and I decided I will do this because it will help me to serve the wave. So the third webinar is about the body. As I said, it's one body. You need to know how to use it because it's your vehicle in life. The fourth module is about sorting out your feelings. Module five is about your mind because words shape your beliefs. Module six is about being accountable. Module seven, now that you've become aware of the four dimensions, how do you move forward? And finally, number eight, how do you step up your life once you're done with your personal thing? Then you're going to relate to others. Your web of life will extend, will expand, because I believe if you sort one person, it will send ripple effects and affect everyone else around you. So once you've sorted that out, once you're enjoying yourself, once you've shifted your life from chaos to harmony, uh, to moving forward with ease, with joy, you're going to open up. You're going to have the bandwidth to care about other things, other animals, the planet, climate change, whatever it is. And I think this is what enriches our lives instead of unboxing stuff. Okay, let's move on. So... Each webinar is going to be a separate topic, as you saw, and it will have a tools of life, and it will teach you, it will give you a glimpse into the unboxing process. Tonight, you're going to design the web of your life in seven easy steps. I've simplified the exercise, actually. I've created a new one to make it really simple so that it's not time consuming and so that you know where you're going. The first step to doing anything, I think, is detach. Because if you can allow yourself to detach, you can be more objective. How do I do that? I imagine that I'm helping a friend. Um, I imagine that I'm looking into the mirror and I'm seeing someone else. When you write something down, when you doodle, when you use pen and paper, you are distancing yourself from the issue because it's no longer inside of you in your mind. You're seeing it. You can reflect on it. And somehow, once you see something that you've made, you can really change things around. Um, I don't know, for me, it really helps. It makes me feel, okay, well, I've done that, then I can change it. And then I have a new plan or I have a new way of looking at things. I remember when I was looking, when I was writing my um, coffee cup book, Your Future in a Coffee Cup, back in 2004, 2005, my, one of my best friends and, and clients walked in and she saw all the papers and all the photographs and it was about the history of coffee, Turkish coffee, and then coffee cup readings, a subject that has not been written about for about 600 years. And I was trying to find a link between divination and between divinity. And I found it in that book. Anyway, to cut a long story short, if I may share that with you, she walked in and she saw all the photographs and she said, oh, what are you writing? And I said, I'm writing about coffee cup readings. She said, hmm. And then she started looking at the documents and looking at the pictures. Very clever girl. And then she just looked up. She's never seen or read or heard about coffee readings and she said you know Sahar what you're doing here I said what Emma and she said you're taking something intangible and you're you're putting structure to it and you're making it tangible and that kind of hit me 
um, I didn't even know that I was doing that, but I love to do that. And if you have been a client of mine, if you've met me in person, you'd always see me making little charts and drawing. It helps me see. But now I have another challenge, which is not to do things, um, but to try and, 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 and create them or visualize them in my mind. It's even harder once you get used to doodling. But for you, please doodle because you will see it. And then the next step, the next challenge is if you start clicking here without maybe spending too much time doodling. So when you write something down, you detach, you're able to reflect, you're able to be a little bit more objective. The second step is to identify. You're going to identify what elements make up your life because we could be at a different stage in life. And this is something else. Sometimes we're going through a change um, or let me call it a variation but we're not really sure, is it a transition or a change? Because different laws apply. So at this point in time, what is your life like? What makes up your life? If you're talking about a business project, then what is making up that business or what are the elements of it? Then the third step is how do you assess? It's a very simple thing. You're gonna make a drawing and you're gonna assess for yourself what areas um, are important for you and how important they are. This is the, leads us to the um, fourth step, which is the evaluation. This will all happen like in two minutes, which is why I love this exercise. I love something that happens quickly that can show me where I am and where I need to go. And number five is a very simple step, um, don't panic, and it's how to resolve your situation. How? Take one act, one act only. And to enforce that positive achievement, you will affirm to yourself, and believe me, I do write things on the wall, on the back of my door, to remind myself to affirm, to enforce, to embed this new belief in my mind. So, I hope you get your tool out. So how do you identify the different elements of your life? Do you want me to make this maybe larger since we have this text here? Okay, it doesn't want to enlarge, that's fine. Um, for, for tonight's some um, example, it could be family and friends is a very important area to you. It could be your work or your career, finance, money, budgeting, anything to do with that. It could be your own self-development. So that is creativities and um, hobbies. And if you are a creative person, then creativity doesn't count as a hobby. Find something else. Hobbies are really, really important because they teach you the genesis of creation. When you make something and you see it, or you learn how to draw it, or you learn how to make it, you are teaching your, yourself in a different way through having fun. How do I make something up? How do I construct um, what I want? So hobbies are very important. Is happiness important to you? I hear a lot of people saying, I'm unhappy, unhappy. So let's evaluate that. And it's a full circle. So another aspect, very important aspect, is relationships, romantic relationships, if you will. You can replace that by business relationships. Let's call it intimate relationships. So this is the tool. When I started, I started trying to make um, a circle and then I started drawing these lines and then I kind of like the shape of it, that it's a web. And then it came to me, why am I enclosing it in a circle? Let it be a web that you can expand, literally like the web of a spider. So let's look at the first area. It could be your own spiritual development, meditation. What do you do to enhance that? Um, what do you follow? What exercises do you do? It could be friends and family, as we said, career, finance, creativity, etc. So you start at the center here and you move outwards. So the center is zero, which is the least satisfied. And 10 is I am most satisfied or happy. You're going to go through these areas. Please do not think this is an intuitive exercise. And the quicker that you answer from the top of your head, the better, because your answer will not be subject to your belief system. So kind of just tune in, relax, take three deep breaths, take pen and paper, draw your circle or download the tool that is provided here and put an X on where you value or how satisfied are you with the friends and family that you have? I just want to check if I actually 
Okay, so let's stay on this slide. So you put an X, zero is unhappy, 10 is very satisfied. And you go around the different elements of your life. I think I chose eight here. Um, for most of us, this would apply. If you have more or less, that's absolutely fine. You can make your own circle. So as you go around, you put an X, an X, an X, you know, from zero to 10, mark how satisfied or unsatisfied are you? And don't think too much. And when you've done this step, I want you to evaluate. So now we're on step four. You see, we're already halfway through, and that was easy, wasn't it? So how do you evaluate your life? What I want you to do is to connect all the points, all the X's that you've put down, connect them, and see what shape you have. Very often, people will get an oblong shape, they will get a star shape, you know, like that, or they will get an amoeba shape. Um, it doesn't matter. There is no right shape. But the idea is to have the circle or your web as well-rounded as possible, meaning that you're reasonably happy with all the areas of your life. And I hope that you've noticed now that some areas are over-exaggerated relative to areas that you're totally unhappy or dissatisfied with. So what is the shape of your web? of life. Is it a circle, a star, or an amoeba? You can write that down now. What areas you need to reduce? Meaning, if one area is really high, I mean, it's really great, but maybe you're focusing your attention there that you literally don't have the energy, the bandwidth, the time to focus on other areas that need your attention. So although it is very positive, it may be slightly out of balance because you have so many hours, so much energy, uh, so much um, you know, devotion. If you, if you devote to something to grow and then it's grown, it will be less maintenance, so to speak. So if it's sticking nicely and it's fine, you can afford to kind of decrease a little bit in order to make your pie bigger. So what area do you need to improve? So the area that you need to improve is, is the one that sticks in, that is away from the borders of the web of life. So if you discovered something now, I hope that you did. What is the best area, the most satisfied area? What is the least satisfactory area? And then in the next slide, we're going to talk what you're going to do about that. OK. Maybe I'll leave it like that. OK. So the resolution, how do you resolve an unsatisfactory situation? I don't know any other way than to really take an action. <laughs> don't think. If you think too much, you're not going to do. So don't think. So for example, let's take family and friends. I want you to write one action that you can take right now to improve that area in your life. One action that you can take right now that you can improve your career, your work, your creativity, your hobbies. What is it that you can take right now that can improve these areas? OK, I'm not distracted. I'm just having my coffee. Um, and then when I was doing this presentation, I thought, why not put one thing that I can stop doing? Because that is as important. So that may not be on your tool, but you can add it. So what can I do? What can I stop doing? I can stop ignoring my friends. I can stop going late to work. I can stop not looking at my bills or, or you know, organizing my accounting. Um, I can stop procrastinating. I can stop ignoring my health. I can stop, you know. So write one thing down and I'll give you I'll give you a few minutes to do that because it's really, really important. One thing that you can do and one thing that you can stop doing. Shall we move on to the next slide? Or the next step? So the sixth step is an act. Once you've identified what you can do, what you can stop doing, I call that a list. So when you have a list of actions, it's a plan. The other thing that I want you to do is don't put yourself under pressure. Because you know I found out like if you say diet starts tomorrow, then the pendulum swings the other way and it says, no, it doesn't. And then you tend to think of everything that you want to eat that has never crossed your mind you know, until now, until you've decided to go on a diet and so on. 
because every action has an equal and opposite reaction. I think if we minimize the resistance, then we can move forward with ease. Think of um, a ball on top of the surface of the water when you're swimming. If you try to catch the ball really hard, you know, you'll end up pushing it away from you. But if you kind of relax, then the waves will make it come closer. I don't know if you've done that, but you know, I've always <laughs> done that playing with balls on the beach. So don't put any pressure. You want to trick yourself into motivating yourself. So don't put pressure. You're going to make a list. You're going to look at your list three times a day. And there's a reason for that. Look at it three times a day before you go to bed, when you first wake up and, you know, a random time during the day. So what happens when you look at it, and we talk about this in the, men in the mental or the mind module, is it's kind of subconsciously you're programming yourself. This is my list. This is my list. There's no pressure. So you're not scared. You're not frightened. You're not um, triggering, you know, run fight or flight behavior. You're just saying this is my list. No, no pressure. This is my list. What I noticed is literally after three or four days, I just get up and do whatever it is because I'm looking at it. I become familiar. It's no longer scary. Somehow emotionally, I'm more prepared. And believe me, when I make a things to do list, things do get done. The last thing that I want you to do is to ask yourself, have I done the best with my day today? And if the answer is yes, great. If the answer is no, no pressure. Tomorrow, do a little bit more. Just ask yourself in all honesty. Be authentic to yourself. This is for you. It's not a homework. Nobody's going to see your results. It's for you to help you. Um, if you feel like, hmm, I could have done a little bit more. I could have committed to that. I could have done this a little bit longer. Then you know, you're going to gauge your own progress. So try and do that. Try and really be uh, true to yourself and ask yourself, have I done the best day? Have I done the best with my day today? And the final step is the affirmation. Write this down. I move forward with ease and joy. Notice, not I am always moving, not I will move. It's in the present tense and it's very strong and it affirms that I'm moving forward with ease and joy. Keep saying that, write it down on your diary, write it everywhere, keep repeating it um, until you feel that it has become second nature. So I hope today has been useful. It's been a privilege for me to share my information with you. I want to thank you for taking out time out from your busy lives. Um, I hope you went unboxing um, to, to join me on this webinar. I really, as I said, really enjoyed this because it also helps me to put it across in a way that makes it very practical for you. As you know, I have been guiding people for the last 25 years. I've, I've probably helped or had more than 14,000 sessions. And I'd like to think that they've become skillful creators of the life that they desire. Um, because everything is a process and you learn once you know that I am in charge. I really do believe that we can be the best version of ourselves. And I do believe that we can rewrite our um, uh, movie if we don't like it. And I just feel that for most of us now nowadays, we're just inexplicably void, you know, through um, our lives are busy, jam packed with stuff um, that we tend to associate and make our identity. And maybe it isn't our real identity. So think about that. Um, I also believe that if we align ourselves through this process, it helps us to align so that we don't swing from left to right, you know, like a pendulum and waste time and be dramatic. If we align, truly align ourselves with our path, um, life becomes easier because you will let struggle less. You will not be far away from your center, from your grounding ability, and somehow the chaos comes down and when it does, it just gives you that boost to keep going on. So for those of you who are really, really interested and excited and would like to pursue this on a deeper level, on a one-to-one -one level, I have a very special gift for you. I will leave the link in the comments below after this uh, live broadcast. And if you're interested to uh, receive your gift, click on the link. And my gift is a 45 minute complimentary discovery session. If you join my unboxed one-to-one -one course, one-to-one -one package, I promise I will support you and I will make your life better. Give me your time, give me your commitment, and we can do this together.
Thank you very much again, and I'll see you next week. Bye-bye for now.